Now we want to learn how to use our calculator to find trig function values. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that the calculator is in degree mode. Find sine 41 degrees and 30 minutes round to the nearest eight decimal places. The goal here is to let our calculator do as much work for us as it can. So we want to type in sine and then the parentheses should come up, 41 degrees. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let our calculator convert to decimal degrees. So we're going to say plus 30 minutes divided by 60. We're converting everything to decimal degrees. Close parentheses and then we will hit enter. You should see in your calculator 0.66 Two six two zero zero four eight, and we want to round to the nearest eight decimal places. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm going to look toward the ninth, and I'm going to decide: do I need to round up or stay? And since eight is larger than five, five or larger, we're going to round up. So I'll get 0 0.6626200005. Now all calculators are different. If you have a different calculator than the one that we use in class, then you're welcome to come and see me and we can figure that out together. Secant of 58 degrees in 24 minutes. If you look on your calculator, you will not see a secant button. Here we must use a reciprocal identity. So secant is the reciprocal for cosine. And our reciprocal identity would be cosine of our angle, 58 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and let our calculator do all the work for us. So 1 divided by, we're going to hit cosine, the parentheses will come up, 58 plus 24 minutes out of 60. Close parentheses. So 1 divided by cosine, we're going to type all of this into the parentheses, in parentheses, and then after we do that we're going to hit enter and you should get 1.908448278. Once again, we want to round to the nearest eight decimal places, so that would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and since this is 5 or larger, we will round up. So our last digit now will be an 8. Okay, if I want to find cotangent of negative 68 degrees in 13 minutes, and we want to round here to the nearest seven decimal places, once again we will not see a cotangent button on our calculator, so we want to use the reciprocal identity and we're going to put our angle inside negative 68 degrees. Now we want to be careful here if we want to let our calculator do all the work for us at one time make sure that if you have a negative angle negative degrees and then minutes after that we need negative 68 degrees so negative 68 so we're going to go the negative direction 68 degrees and then in the negative direction, 13 minutes. So we're going to say minus. We're going to keep going in that negative direction, 13 divided by 60. Close parentheses, hit enter. And we're rounding to the nearest seven decimal places. You should get negative 0. 3, 9, 9, 
six three four zero eight and we want to round so I'm going to go one two three four five six seven and then once again that's larger five or larger so we need to round up so our final value we minus zero point three nine nine six three four one one divided by cotangent 31.2 degrees now this is already in decimal degrees which is nice we don't have to do that conversion and one divided by cotangent we recognize this as one of our reciprocal identities this is actually directly equivalent to tangent of 31.2 degrees and all we have to do is type that into our calculator directly and we should get 31.2 we should get those digits and we're going to round to the nearest eight decimal places so we're going to count off one two three four five six seven eight and once again we are rounding up so your final answer that you would give would be point six zero five six two one five three and lastly we can actually type this directly into our calculator as cosine sixty four divided by make sure you close the parentheses there very important uh, divided by sine of 64 degrees and your calculator already recognized those as degrees so we don't have to hit a symbol and once we hit enter then you should get 0 0.487732589 we are asked to round to the nearest four decimal places. So we have one, two, three, four. And I'm going to look toward the fifth. And since this is less than four or less, then we will stay at seven. So 0.4877 would be our final answer. For example two, we're looking to find the angle in the interval from 0 to 90 degrees that satisfies the given statement. We want to simplify our answer and give our answer as an integer or it's the decimal and we're going to round to the nearest six decimal places as we need to. So sine of some angle theta between 0 and 90 degrees is equal to our positive value and we're given this number here. If we want to find the angle, we're going to have to rewrite this. First of all, the sine function, all of our trig functions have inputs as their angles, so angles are inputs into our trig functions and then we spit out the sine value. And remember that sine value must be between 1 and negative 1, so we know that. But it can take in any angle and spit out a sine value. Now, we're looking for the angle here. What we're going to have to do is use a different function. We're going to use what we call the inverse function. Now, sine inverse, what does sine inverse do? Sine inverse takes in a sine value, so it does exactly the opposite. It takes a sine value in from negative 1 to 1 and it spits out the angle. So it does exactly opposite of what the sine function does. So if I want to find this angle then I'm going to have to use the sine inverse function. So we're going to look on our calculator 
and often you will see that there's sign inverse directly above the sign button. So you might have to hit a shift key or a second button and hit the second button and then hit the sign key again and you should see sign inverse pop up in your calculator. We're going to hit take the sign value and we're going to put that into our calculator inside of our sign inverse function. And then we're going to hit enter. Make sure you see that little minus one there. That's that, that's what that means inverse. We need to see that so that we can find the inverse value, the angle value. If this is the sine value of the angle, then what is the angle? And then our calculator should spit out theta for us, our angle, and that angle should come back as 49. I'm going to go ahead and write down all the digits that I see in my calculator. And then we're asked to round to the nearest six decimal places. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I get a five there. Oops. So our answer will be 49. Point one three eight two two seven degrees. So this time we found the angle that has that sine value that we were given. All right, in part B, we're asked to find secant alpha. So remember, alpha would just be a Greek letter that represents an angle, and we want to find the angle alpha that has this secant value. Now, once again, we do not have a secant button in our calculator, and I also don't have a secant inverse button in my calculator. So what we're going to have to do is first, we're going to use the reciprocal identity. So I want to convert from secant to cosine. So secant is 1 over cosine alpha. Remember that these are equivalent. Secant alpha is equivalent to 1 over cosine alpha. And we're going to keep this the same. So we haven't changed anything yet. We just wrote secant alpha in its identities, reciprocal identity form. Those are equivalent, so we haven't changed anything. Now I want to take the reciprocal of both sides. Well, the reciprocal of 1 over cosine alpha is cosine alpha. Now we've changed something. We have made a big change. We've gone from secant all the way to cosine. So we first go from secant to its equivalent form. So these are exactly the same things. No changes made just wrote it in a different way. Now we are actually doing something big. We are taking the left side and we are taking the reciprocal of that. Now I have to do the same thing to the other side. So we're going to do 1 divided by 1.22631567. So now we have actually taken the reciprocal of both sides. Now I'm looking for the angle. So we do need to enter our inverse function, so cosine inverse. Now this is our cosine value, so we're going to put that in our calculator. And then we're going to hit enter. Remember that you might have to hit the second button or the shift key um, to actually access cosine inverse. So you hit second and then cosine, and then you should see in your calculator cosine with a little minus one. Parentheses, and then we're going to type in one divided by, and then we're going to put in those numbers, and we're going to close parentheses and hit enter. And what you should get for alpha is 35.368043 degrees. Okay, rounded to the near six decimal places.